You're listening to Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast, talking all things fundraising, charities, nonprofits, and more. Here's your host, as always, Simon Scriver. Let me read this testimonial. The universe has a sense of humor. I know this because when my husband, Ted, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, I was already dealing with essential tremor. Just to be clear, I do not find it essential. We fight the good fight. Imagine our excitement at finding something new that we were capable of doing. Mo's unsteady hand art class helps us and others to socialize, and we feel creative in a way we thought not possible given our physical difficulties. The unsteady hand is a gift. That's an amazing testimony. That was written by someone about this nonprofit called The Unsteady Hand. And the founder of The Unsteady Hand is with me today, a gentleman named Mo Unstead. Hello, Mo. Hello. How are you? I'm just right. How are you? Just right, are you? That's I'm just good. right. <laughs> good. So you're, you're, thanks for joining me today. Uh, there's a few things I'd love to chat to you about today. Um, you founded The Unsteady Hand. I did, yes. What is, uh, what is The Unsteady Hand? The Unsteady Hand is a, it's an organization that kind of gives people with Parkinson's a creative outlet um, to do something other than exercise. Mm-hmm. Um, when you get Parkinson's, they tell you you have to exercise and you have to exercise and you have to exercise. And we wanted to give something a little different to people with Parkinson's. Um, still working on fine motor skills and some of that stuff is so important, but I just thought it was important for people to be able to express themselves creatively, cre- creatively and mm-hmm. um uh, be able to express themselves creatively and hang out and do something that's not a support group because there's yeah. a lot of support groups. We're not a support group. We don't talk about Parkinson's at our group, which yeah. is really nice. I was going to make a rule actually when we started that you weren't allowed. It's like Fight Club. You're not allowed to talk about Fight Club or Fight Club or whatever it is. I don't yeah. even know the rule. I, I never saw the movie, but um, I was going to make a rule that you couldn't talk about Parkinson's at the at our, our creativity labs. Yeah, and I forgot because I was so excited and so nervous at our first one. But it turns out that nobody talks about Parkinson's at our labs yeah. because we're all engaged with something else. And it's really amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the problems with Parkinson's, a, a, a diagnosed symptom of Parkinson's is apathy. So getting people out of the house and doing something other than sit around and moping is really hard. Yeah. Um, so one of my goals was to get people out of the house and, and create community, something other than a support group. That's what apathy is an actual symptom an actual symptom of a parkinson's you know parkinson's the the gig with parkinson's is dopamine it's okay. dopamine not working anymore um, okay okay and dopamine makes you pretty happy makes you yeah. have i mean you eat chocolate dopamine goes up you have sex dopamine goes up mm-hmm. all those things are important with dopamine um so when dopamine's not working um you have parkinson's and when dopamine's not working it's hard to feel good yeah. Um, so, it's, it's, like I said, it's just a diagnosed symptom of Parkinson's is apathy. I actually so, I know very little little about Parkinson's, so I'm I'm probably going to ask a lot of stupid questions. Um, no, that's I'm, right. I'll have some some answers, but probably not all of them. I'm still learning about answers. Parkinson's myself. <laughs> what is what is your connection with Parkinson's? In case it's so, I was I was um, my general practitioner, my GP doctor, about a year and a half ago. Um, I went in with a, a small tremor in my pinky, and mm-hmm. uh, he said, I hate to tell you this. He did a couple of tests. He checked some movements and he said, I've got some bad news. I think you've got Parkinson's. You need to go see a neurologist. Mm. I was like, wow. Okay. Um, so that's how it all started. That was about a year and a half ago. And I've been seeing, I've seen three neurologists since then. I was mm. originally diagnosed with something called a functional tremor. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> um, even after Googling it a hundred times, I still don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, but after then we saw another neurologist and we kind of played around with the idea of Parkinson's for a while, had a DAT scan, which is a brain scan, like an MRI kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that came back inconclusive. And my, my neurologist was like, yeah, you probably have Parkinson's. And then he said, you have Parkinson's. And then about a month later, he said, well, maybe you don't have Parkinson's. And I was like, this is dumb. I'm going to see somebody else. Yeah. Is, so this, a re- is this a real doctor? Or just someone? Right. <laughs> right. So I went to go see a movement disorder specialist, which is a neurologist who's done a fellowship in Parkinson's and movement disorders. Okay. And we did another DAT scan. And he pretty much within a week said, you've got Parkinson's. Welcome to the club. So that's okay. my connection to Parkinson's. I, and um, so I found out that I had Parkinson's kind of a year and a half ago. Um, and found out for real, I had Parkinson's about a month and a half ago. Okay. Wow. And yeah. how are you feeling? That's, 
I feel great. I, well, I feel great. I feel good. I don't feel yeah. great. Sometimes I feel like crap. Yeah. Mostly I feel good. Um, better living through modern pharmaceuticals, you know. Um, yeah. I've got some good meds that I'm on that help me through my day. Yeah. Uh, so, so the unsteady hand. You're a what do you call them? Service users, uh, client, participants. We call them participants. participants. Artists. You're... We don't call them artists. Actually, that's another long story, but we won't talk about that if you don't want to. Um, so we call them participants because they're no good. No, just the opposite. They, um, when we first started, I was telling people we do art with people with Parkinson's, and when I was mm -hmm. presenting it to people with Parkinson's, I'd say we do art, and the first thing out of people's mouth was, "I'm not an artist. Uh, and I yeah, can't yeah. draw." Yeah. So we have totally taken the word art and artistic and artist out of our vocabulary. Mm. And we talk about playfulness and creativity and imagination. And we talk about that stuff. And then I can get people engaged. Um, mm. I, I hate to put this out in public and we maybe we'll edit this out, but I'm tricking my participants into becoming fine artists and they don't know it. So I don't know. Now know that it's either. out there. Maybe they're going to know what I'm doing, but yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, it's Maybe. it's intimidating, isn't it? Like art, art can be intimidating for a lot of people. I spent some time yeah. in the hospital, and and we did art therapy, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of like, uh, you know, most people were like I'm not an artist, and I don't want to do it. And it was very like they tried to make it really safe, and like mm -hmm. you don't have to show anyone what you're doing. You don't right. have to talk about it. It's just about the act of doing it. Right, and that's exactly what we're about process, not product. Yeah. So it's about you know, for the first couple of labs we had, nobody took anything home, which yeah. I found really interesting. Um, they yeah. they cared about being in a group of people doing something together and creating, and but they didn't care about the end product. They didn't, they didn't want to take it. Now that they were a little deeper in and they're starting to produce some cool stuff, yeah. they're starting to take it home. But even still, they leave 90% of the pro things produced during a lab with me. And I keep it all. I don't throw anything away. Nice. Uh, but it's interesting that it's it, like you say, it's all about process. It's not about product. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah. that's what we're about. The and the story. products turn out amazing. Um, at some point, we'll pitch the website and all that stuff. And um, I put pictures of everything we do on the website and Facebook and Instagram. Oh, yeah. So that family members from across the country can log in, like grandkids and kids, because most of my participants are older and are not mm -hmm. net savvy, um, but mm -hmm. their families are. So this way, their families can see what they're doing from wherever they are in the country or the world. Um, and it's That's documented great. and they get to share it without having to send emails with 20 pictures in it, which is a pain. Yeah. And most of them don't email anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm finding so, out. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously a very visual organization, so it's a great way of uh, people seeing what you're doing and getting them right. engaged and from a, right. from a, sorry to sully it, but from a marketing point of view. No, it's, you know, a lot of what we do is marketing. I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. shy about that. Um, yeah. We're throwing a big party next month and, it's a party to say thank you, but it's a party to gather emails. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, yeah, okay. Well, let's take a step back. So, how did okay. how did you and me meet? Do you remember? I do. We um, uh, we met at the AFP, and I don't know. I think it's the American Fundraisers Professionals, but I think I'm making that up. I'm not sure that's right. Is that right? Uh, association. Oh, that's uh, close. Fundraising professionals. Yeah, that's, that's pretty close. close. I, uh, you're, so obviously, I, you're obviously an avid. Uh, yeah. Member of <laughs> well, I I saw you were. I didn't. I actually didn't know about you or who you were. I just knew it was a fundraising event uh, seminar, and it was two hundred and some odd dollars to attend. I don't even remember mm. two fifty. And I was like, mm. well, I can't afford that. So I sent them an email saying, I'm new and upcoming. I can't afford this. Can I come anyway? And they said, for sixty dollars, you can come. So they gave me a scholarship. <laughs> they they didn't say sixty dollars. They said we'll give you this much off, but it was sixty dollars. So to me, yeah. it was sixty dollars. Um, yeah. And so I just showed up to learn about fundraising, and you were the keynote speaker, and mm -hmm. I was the first guy there. And um, we <laughs> ended up chatting before everything started for I don't know ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah, maybe twenty, maybe twenty, um, and then. You did your thing, and then we were done, and we were chatting a little bit afterwards. And then you needed a ride to the airport, <laughs> so I, I made some people angry by giving you a ride to the airport. <laughs> let's let's edit that out. We um, just so kind of hung out, didn't we? Yeah, we just kind of hung out, and um, I gave. We had pretty rotten traffic. It was the first time I was happy that we had about rotten traffic to get the API because it gave us more time to chat, which is cool. Mm, it's funny. Um, well, yeah. we we were talking. I mean, we were both saying that we don't really take on new friends anymore. Right. We're both kind of 
and uh yeah it was just kind of we kind of clicked didn't we I yeah i would say so. so yeah which is unusual for me but so i'm curious why um you know when people set up a, a non-profit they not that fundraising is the last thing on their mind um you know fundraising is a big driver right at the beginning people did a lot of fundraising but i don't i don't recall really, really meeting any anyone who sets up a charity and goes very early to one of these professional fundraising events mm -hmm. you know you, the fundraising in the early days is usually quite uh not unprofessional but it's like ad hoc novice. and it's not planned and stuff like that. yeah maybe novice like not to patronize anyone but right. i thought it was really interesting to see you actually consciously going to something like this right in those early days what's why 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 are you why what, why why what's your, um, what's your approach to fundraising oh geez well boy that's a tough question my approach yeah. right now is a little scattered a kind of a shotgun approach um yeah that I'm doing a little bit of a lot of different things, which yeah. I don't think is particularly effective. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm experiment. It's more of experimentation than shotgun. So I'm trying mm -hmm. new things, different things. Um, I started a T-shirt campaign, which mm -hmm. made very little money, but it was it was good PR, um, and it was no upfront cost. And it took me about three minutes to design the T-shirt, and mm -hmm. I have a hundred dollars in the bank after three weeks. Mm. And a hundred dollars is not much, but you know, um, one of my board members they they always say, how do you need an elephant? And it's one bite at a time. Yeah. So for a new organization with a very small budget, a hundred dollars is significant, especially yeah. when you consider I spent three minutes invested and that's it. And then maybe 10 minutes posting it on Facebook and Twitter. So maybe 15 yeah. minutes of total investment, we ended up with a hundred bucks. That's pretty good ROI, but that's yeah, kind of the scatter. That's if someone kind of offered like you four hundred dollars an hour, you'd take it. You'd be yeah, I'd take nothing. it in a second. Yeah. Are, are you offering me four hundred dollars an hour? No, not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Okay. Um, so, but we do. Um, so we've done a couple of uh, events, um, mm -hmm. which I have found the ROI and that is poor return on investment mm -hmm. is not great. Mm -hmm. um, they're a lot of fun. I've changed the name to our events to fun to friend raisers. I'm sure that's cliche and I'm not the first person to do that, but we talk about them as friend raisers rather than fundraisers because events mm -hmm. are a lot of work, um, a yeah. lot of work on the front end and a lot of work on the back end. Um, and there's a lot of work during the event and you don't <laughs> make a ton of money. <laughs> yeah. I, at least we haven't. Um, you know, I talked yeah. to other development profess professionals who make $800,000 at their events and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. You, you know, but it's a different scale um, for us. Yeah, these are established, right? They're established organizations with a big audience, right? And we have a very, you know, our mailing list is ninety people strong right now, right? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. and only sixty percent of the people who I send an email to open those emails. I know this because I have a Mailchimp. Um, I can tell that's, who opened it, when opened it, and how, and what they pretty on. high. It's, it's pretty high. high. Oh, yeah, good. the sex, sector average is about thirty percent open oh, rate. Well. There were, well but it's skewed because we're new and everybody on my yeah. mailing list cares, right? Yeah. So I don't think it's a valid number, 60% yet. I, yeah, yeah. Ask me in three years, it'll probably be 30%. I, well, I hope it's not, but it'll probably be closer to 30%. Yeah. But yeah. I get the fact that we're, the 60% is not real. It, well, it's not yeah. probably not sustainable. Well, you've got a deeper relationship with those people. And I mm -hmm. think that's that's your goal over the next few years, isn't it? It's to, right. to grow, but maintain that deep right. relationship. Right. And that's exactly. where... That's where nonprofits struggle is because as you get bigger, you can't you can't have a deep personal relationship with every single person. Right. You've got that, that wider net. So how do you how do you maintain that? I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think some of it is uh, it's being real. I mean, I, that's mm -hmm. maybe another cliche, but I think if you're honest and real about what you're doing and how you're doing it, and when you get big, you tell people, hey, we're big, and it's hard for me to reach out to everybody, so I'm sending mm -hmm. a mass email. I mean, my first, my first, I felt really guilty the first bulk email I sent, because when we <laughs> first started, I literally emailed every individual an email, because I didn't want it to look like I was emailing everybody, and finally, yeah. I sent an email to everybody that said, I'm really sorry but this is going to 30 people all at once yeah. <laughs> rather than me emailing 30 people because it's like yeah. you're saying, you grow, things change. And then when we started using MailChimp, the little plug for MailChimp, um, I sent an email that said, hey, by the way, this is MailChimp. This is what it looks like. And I apologize. I'm not sending you your own email, but I'm, we're getting too big and I've got, I can't send 80 emails anymore. Yeah. Um, thanks for your understanding and patience. And people emailed back saying, great, thanks. That's amazing. Nobody ever yeah. says that. 
right? So if we were just being real and yeah. just acknowledging our growth and acknowledging that we couldn't participate on the same level of yeah. interaction because yeah. we were growing. And I think people appreciated rather than just doing it, telling them, hey, we're doing this and we don't feel great about it, but it's real, right? Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Um, it does. I mean, I think that's, I get the impression, you know, we've spoken a few times but where a lot of your early success has come from is just from you being real and open and honest mm -hmm. and connecting yeah. with people on that human level. People, people respond to that. Right. There's a, there's a saying in fundraising, which is, you know, humans give to humans or people right. give to people. And so the more human you are in your connection, I think you're without effort, you're doing that. Right. Yeah. That's well, it's a little effort, but, but it comes naturally, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, yeah. I got one of your mails the other day and it was for your event. What's your, what's your event in January called? Uh, it is called um, shaking in the new year and unsteady gala and gala was not my word. The, the, our partner really wanted the word gala in there. So I kind of yeah. designed the whole name around gala. <laughs> Amer Americans love Americans love that word for some. Reason. I know it's bizarre. <laughs> but shake, shake it in the new year. Do you know what? As as someone who you know, I work with a lot of nonprofits. The first thing that came popped into my head when I saw that was like, oof, that wouldn't get approved. <laughs> that wouldn't get approved by most uh, right. organizations because right. it could be seen as offensive or insensitive. Right. What? Uh, yeah. But so I mean, I I love that you've done that. Do you ever? Do you think when you write that? Oh yeah. Like someone, um, yeah. Kind of. You know, I um, so we have uh, we have like three mottos that we use a lot on mm -hmm. our literature and, and and when we're talking to each other as as participants and staff and and those are we got this mm -hmm. all lowercase no period mm -hmm. um, embrace your tremor and free your tremor free your mind right mm -hmm. so it, to me it's about acknowledging you have it's kind of what we were just talking about a second ago it's about acknowledging the reality of our situation we have tremors. Well, not mm -hmm. everybody with Parkinson's has a tremor, but most people with Parkinson's have a tremor. And to me, it you, you got if you don't find the humor in it, it's really flipping depressing, mm. right? Mm. Parkinson's in and of itself is not fun, right? It's not mm. <laughs> it's not a good thing to have. But we're making it pretty fun as a group to have to be engaged with each other as a, people that have Parkinson's. Yeah. So I I'm not afraid of. Um, and if, if you're the type of person who is offended by shaking in the new year, you don't belong at our party anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're no fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, fun. and then I have a board, which is really cool. We have a, I have a baby board. I have I have a board of people who've never been on a board before. Yeah. Um, and they're all yes people. And two of them are artists and two of them have Parkinson's and one of them is a PT for people with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, we they don't they don't have a lot of restrictions on what we do and how i do it when i say we i mean me yeah um and i've been encouraged by a couple of people locally uh kind of kind of a couple of um mentors in town mm -hmm. um deb thornton who runs the imagination space is is amazing and her advice to me was keep it that way she said lots of boards lots of arts organizations go boardy that's my mm -hmm. own adjective and that they get swamped and bogged down by their board because they don't have the same kind of attitude and vision about art. And mm. she said, keep your board full of artists and creatives and don't worry about getting lawyers and accountants. She said, Those people will work for you for money or they'll give you their services for free. If they believe in what you're doing, you don't need them on your board just to get mm -hmm. the service. Cause I think a lot of people get boards to perform services for them. If that yeah. makes any sense, like yeah, they, yeah. they try and align roles for their board members that are like the accountant the lawyer the yeah right? the hr person the, yeah right right yeah i was and working so with, i was working with sorry go on go no you're good i was just no. gonna say i was working with with an organization with a board like that where they um every time they spoke to someone or every time they got someone who was like skilled like a lawyer or an accountant who said i want to do something their gut reaction was to like invite them to join the board Right, and then, but then you have the headache of them being on the board, or at least they have the headache of being on a board. Right, um, and there's obviously a lot of other options. There's like whatever, so you know, committees. There's like ambassadors. There's, you know, there's mm -hmm. there's all different ways people can be involved without that level. But on the flip side of it, I mean, you do 
you know, a board full of artists, with all due respect Correct. to artists. No, so. I, I forget where you're going. And you're just let it go. I can handle it. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of a really pol polite way to do this. No, don't worry about say, it. That's not your style. Artists, artists, I love artists. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> But to, but to get a room full of artists organizing fucking yeah. anything sounds like a nightmare. Well, it's kind of fun. They they have their yeah, it'd be it'd be a lot of fun. But yeah, <laughs> I mean that there's, there's that um, it's just I suppose it's thinking about your board isn't isn't always there to say yes and to compliment right. you. Your board is there to challenge you, right? And yeah, you're gonna have a much easier life if they're not challenging you. But, but the board is there for the good of the organization, right? And as I grow, I think I will learn. I'll, that'll make more sense to me right now. That's just terrifying, and I yeah. don't like the idea of a board that could fire me. <laughs> let's be yeah. honest, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so for right now, I think we, I, you know, we talked at our board meetings about organically growing into a pseudo board, where we have yeah. a couple of people who are not board members and never been board members and don't want to be board members, and a couple of people who are board members who've been board members who want to be boardy, and kind mm -hmm. of have a a. a, a a coalition of sorts of people yeah. that, that are not all boardy. Does that make sense? I yeah. mean, I hate to use the yeah. word boardy like it's a bad thing, but as an ED, boardies, yeah. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many people I've met who are EDs who are like, I hate my board. My yeah. board is the biggest pain in my butt. I I can't do anything. My hands are always tied. I quit. Yeah. And I was like, I don't yeah. ever want to get there. Right. Yeah. And if, and if I have any power over that, I'm not going to get there. I don't well, it's strange. I mean, it, it seems it, in the fundraising world, especially people, myself included, we criticize boards and joke about boards because usually, usually where it stems from is is the board comes in and they hate fundraising or they don't want to be a part of it. And the boards that aren't like that, the people, the ones where people love boards, are when there's realistic expectations of board members coming in. Mm -hmm. like, um, so the board members coming in and know that they're going to have to take part in fundraising or know that they're expected to do this or know that they're right. expected to turn up for an event. And that's where I think it's just managing expectations and, and you right. minimize like arguments with people in any right. walk of life when yeah. you, you have similar expectations. Yeah. I don't know. And I think roles is important. You know, like we have one of our board members, she came right out of our last meeting and said, I don't raise money. I don't want to do it. I'm not good at it. It's not in my wheelhouse. And we all went, that's cool. We've got other people who are really good at it. Did you? Cool. you said that's cool. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I would have been I would have been like, get the fuck out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, no. I, I I that's cool. Um and then we had another board member who said, Well, I can't I hate it too, and I'm no good at it, but I'll try. And another board member nah, who said, I love right. raising money, I'll be out there. And it's that balance. You, not everybody yeah, yeah. in my mind, not everybody on the board has to raise money. Yeah. If one board member can make connections in the art world for me. That's yeah. just as important as her raising ten thousand. Well, maybe not as important as ten thousand dollars, but um, that's just as important it's as irrelevant. raising money. It's relevant, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know. It's so, you know I'm making this up as I go. To be really honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that, but yeah, I also get the impression you're talking to a lot of people. You you take a lot of notes. You're like absorbing a lot of stuff. And I'm trying. I don't yeah. know. You you strike me. Yeah, you strike me as someone who's trying not just going gung ho, but knows your own gaps in knowledge i guess is, right. is what I, i'm trying to say so self-awareness or maybe i don't know that's maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah i think I, uh, yeah that's the impression yeah. i get so yeah. when you when you started um i'm you know i'm always going to take it towards fundraising because that's the yeah, part yeah, of that's your deal. That, that, that i love where how did the fundraising start what, what was your first donation have you got any donations uh yes and uh so the first donation was um I had the idea for the unsteady hand and I had two of my workmates were like, I kind of told them what we were doing. Um, and they're like, how do we get involved? I was like, I don't know. We guess we'll have a meeting and we'll talk about it. So uh, about a week after we first came up with the idea of the unsteady hand, two of my workmates and I sat down at a coffee shop and started talking about the unsteady hand, what it could look like and what the art would be like and what the participants would be like. And we were just brainstorming about what, what our vision could be someday. And I went to the bathroom and I came back and there was a hundred dollar bill on my notebook that a random person in the coffee shop had overheard our conversation and anonymously donated a hundred dollars to our cause and then left and asked the girls who were at the table not to reveal who they were ever. And they, to this day haven't. That was, that was almost nine months ago. I mean, we're new, we're babies. Um, but that yeah. was nine months. That was our first. And when that happened, that was my cue 
that I knew this was going to rock and roll. This was yeah. going to be, this was going to work because some random who is the most amazing person in the world gave me a random hundred dollars who, yeah. and it was just amazing. So that was our first donation. Um, oh, that's beautiful. Why? Just because they overheard. They overheard our conversation. They were at a different your... table and overheard our yeah. conversation, and just thought we had a good vision. Um, yeah. And that was that was a sign from the universe. <laughs> that's mostly for your benefit. Um, that was just a sign that things were going to take off and be good. Um, yeah. Um, that is, I mean, that is a sign. So tell tell me about the sign from the universe because this is, I think, this is a key thing for people to hear. Oh, sure. So so, I, um, I talk about this a lot, but you, right. you've told, so you've told me a I few stories. A, of... I have a philosophy that the universe provides. You know, I don't. I'm not a very religious person nor a spiritual person, um, but I do think that the if you, I believe what you put. In, so this is probably better. You'll probably like this better than when we first talked about this. My yeah. belief is what you put into the universe is what you get back. Yeah. And if you provide into the universe well the universe provides. And that's, so I narrow that down to the statement of the universe provides. But what it really means is if you put it out there, it comes yeah. back to you. And that's I what I like when we, but I didn't explain that to you the first time we had this conversation. So you put yeah. it like that, that, that. You've, um, you've, you've edited out the important bit, which is what you put out there. Right, 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 right. So, because, but that's the important <laughs> bit. But I narrow it down to the universe provides because it's a lot easier to say it and it's a lot faster. And most people don't challenge it. <laughs> yeah my friend my friend said to me years ago he's he said um you have to put yourself out there so good things happen mm -hmm. and it and it is and the phrase that i love is the harder you work the luckier you get yeah and, same yeah, idea that's, that's the impression i, I like get with you is you yeah. you have a lot of conversations you talk to a lot of people i, I do you put yourself <laughs> out there a lot and as a result good things happen to you yeah i uh, agreed I, I i concur and yeah. I, so that's that's what the that's what the universe provides means to me is that what you put out there, you get back. Um, so, so has this been like as like a conscious or unconscious strategy of yours? Is to just talk to people, listen to people, you know, just meet as many people as possible. Yeah, actually, very con. I am, I am by nature, and nobody believes this that I've met in the past eight months. I am mm. by nature an introvert. Mm. I don't, I don't have a lot of friends. I don't mm. socialize. I don't go out to dinner with people. I don't, I don't. I don't hang out with my workmates. Mm -hmm. I'm a very, I'm a loner, but if you put me in a situation where I need to be social, uh, I'm a lot like my dad, who's mm -hmm. kind of the same way as me. He, he can shine. And so I put myself in this position to go to these AFP meetings and to go to join the Pikes Peak Arts Council and to join the nonprofit association of Colorado and go to all their meetings and all their workshops and everything mm -hmm. um, to purposely put myself out there to meet, because this, to me, it's all about relationships. Mm. Everything we do and want to do in the world with the unsteady hand has to do with relationships, whether that's relationships with our participants, whether it's relationships with our volunteers, our board, our donors, whoever. It's all about and, – and the way you make relationships is you meet people. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm trying to meet people, and, yeah. and it's working. Um, you asked, have we raised any money? We raised $6,000 in six months. Mm -hmm. And not ask, I mean, this is kind of stretching the truth, but we have not asked for a penny mm -hmm. when we raised $6,000. I mean, we had some fundraisers slash fundraisers, um, yeah. but we've never really, I've never really walked up to somebody and said, could you support the unsteady hand? We need your money. Yeah. You haven't shaken the that. Yeah, or gone out. Right. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to do that because I think if we can raise six grand in six months without trying, what happens if I put some energy into it and my board put some energy into it? Um, I think we could, um, I think we could meet our needs right now financially uh -huh. in a fairly short period of time um, for both sustainability and growth, which are my two really important things in my world right now is that the unsteady hand is both sustainable and grows. Yeah. But your, your energy so far has gone into almost that cultivation of relationships, like building yeah, relationships and meeting people developing it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's that's my focus. My and things are happening because of it. So I'm meeting people like you. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, I mean that was because I put myself in a position I didn't want to. I mean, I didn't want to do that <laughs> AFP thing. I don't yeah. do conferences. I've never been to a conference in my life. Yeah. yeah. Um. And now I go to three support groups a month, but yeah. I go because of the unsteady hand, and I get to meet people and encourage them to try what we're doing and. So three days, a, three days a month, I go to support groups, one in Pueblo, one in Monument, one in Colorado Springs. Yeah. Um, I go 
I just do stuff now, which I never did. I go to AFP mixers. <laughs> I've never it's been fun. to a mixer in my life. It's funny. There's, there's like the introvert idea. I think there's a lot of introverts in fundraising. There's um um a woman named Nikki Bell that I, who's an amazing fundraiser that I do like training with, and we mm -hmm. do a session called fundraising for introverts. Yeah. Um, because there's so many people who identify as introverts, but to be a good fundraiser, you have to put them put yourself out there like that and make those conversations. Right. And right. one of the points she made, I think it was her, was she was talking about that having a nonprofit attached to you gives you like an excuse to be mm -hmm. brave. Mm -hmm. It gives mm -hmm. you an excuse to talk to people. It gives you a reason to like speak to strangers. Right. And there's something right. really like life changing about that. Yeah. This, you know, we've discussed before that um, since I've started the unsteady hand, I I've, I've made friends. <laughs> I've never <laughs> had right, which is cool. Um, yeah. I never really had a lot of friends. I, you know, if I had one friend at the time, that was a lot. Yeah. And now I could probably count on probably need both hands to count the number of friends I've got, which is a big deal to me. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's um, and that's cool. And I think yeah. you're right. It kind of gives you some purpose and a reason to talk to people. I've yeah. got something to talk about now. You know, <laughs> before I was like, nobody cares what I have to say. It's not that interesting. But now I got to yeah. talk about the unsteady hand. I'm like, this is great. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta come and do what we do and it's fun. And yeah. And, um, and it's interesting, my, my energy level is, like, even right now, I find myself kind of talking really fast and getting really excited. Um, and I kind of do the same thing when I'm asking, when I'm talking to people about the unsteady hand. And it, they come in at a higher level because of that, which, yeah. as far as their excitement. Like, wherever I come in, they come in, like, four notches below. Yeah. So if I come in midline, they're like, eh, well, that's neat. But if I come in super excited and having fun and just jazzed, they yeah. come in pretty happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that makes sense at all, but yeah, it does. So yeah, you have to the it. higher I come in, the higher they come in. And if I don't come in high enough, they don't buy in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They, <laughs> so, they absorb a bit of you. So you have to, you have to dial it up. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. So what's, the, um, what's next for you? Like what's your priorities now in terms of fundraising, but the nonprofit as a whole, what's, what's <clears throat> the next six um, months? Oh, geez. You well, next, that before, Cause I got the next two uh -huh. weeks. <laughs> the next well the next in the next month we're having our our party um shaking in the new year uh -huh. um which is a it's not a fundraiser at all uh -huh. um it's a party to say thank you to our supporter hey did your computer die no i think it was yours no. No. Oh, mine. Really? You, I don't you know. just froze at me. Oh, you totally went away, and it said change your little icon. Change. I really, came yeah. Up so, okay, that's fine. Oh, that's right. We'll keep going. So, so tell me uh, what's happening in the next few weeks. Um. So, in a on the twenty fifth of January, we're having our shake rat. No, that's our old. Our first one was called Shake Rattle and Be Whole. That was our first launch party. Was Shake Rattle, shake, rattle, rattle and whole. what? Shake Rattle Be Whole. Oh, Be Whole. Like okay. like what the whole being, kind of thing. Okay. That was our yeah. first event that um, I was expecting 40 people at. We had 150 yeah. people show up and we raised wow. $1,500 in our first, wow. like, and we were faking it. We didn't, that was, we had no idea what was happening. Um, we, yeah. we, we had 150, to, for example, we had no idea what was happening. We had 150 people walk through the door because I had somebody counting with a clicker. Wow. And um, we left the event with about 14 email addresses. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was dumb. Um, that was a, that was a lesson to be learned right there. And um, so, what would you do differently next time? Well, the for example, the next party we're having on January twenty fifth, um, we are ha having a door prizes, and to be entered for the door prizes, you have to fill out the thing with your name, your address, your email address, and your phone number. And we'll probably mm -hmm. do a little survey on it of like two or three questions, and we can't decide what those questions are now. So, to, yeah. so people, so we're going to capture that information this time for everybody who nice. walks through the door. Nice. Because that was a lesson learned. I mean, I've that was the only like um, you had asked me earlier what happens when the shit happens. <laughs> um, the shit happened on our first event where we didn't capture any email addresses and any information from all these people who gave us money and joined us for our opening and were so excited about our thing. And there was no way for me to reach out to them and say thank you. <laughs> it was yeah. so embarrassing. Um, yeah. And I was mad. I was I was not at anybody, but mostly at myself. And yeah. so this time we're doing it just the opposite. We're taking the opposite tag. It's like, if you want to play, you got to give me your name, your address, your phone number, your email address. Yeah. 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 
And, um, and so we're going to capture this information this time, which is what yeah. we're doing different. Um, and okay. we're, we're making it, we're giving them a reason for us to capture the information by having some gifts to be given away as door prizes that mm -hmm. these, all these, all these pieces of paper will go into a pot and then we'll pull out names for a couple of silly little prizes. Um, yeah. But just to motivate nice. people. And then our party, so our party um, is uh, going to be, um, I'm setting up a create uh, kind of a pop-up creativity lab for people to do mm -hmm. fish prints, Gai Taku, which is what our first creativity lab was. Um, so they'll be doing art. We've got a band coming to play. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the part, our partner organization is going to provide the catering and the, the alcohol and, um, they're pretty much funding the whole thing. So it's right. not really a fundraising event. It's a thank you to get back to what we were originally talking about. It's not a, it's a friend raiser again. It's a way to connect with people, build relationships so that long-term down the road, maybe I can spend some energy requesting some funds from these people. But right now yeah. I'm going to have one sign on one table that says your support is important to us. We're a 501c3. If you, care to give us I, mean, I don't know what it's going to say yet but if you'd like to give us a donation yeah, yeah. we're not going to say no but i'm not going to ask anybody for money at this event other than yeah. that one sign that says if you'd like to participate in giving us funds that's great but this is just a thank you to the people to our participants to our supporters so far um to the people that i hope support us in the future and it's yeah. kind of a, it's a marketing gig for the senior living facility where we're having it um yeah which is kind of a high-end senior living facility where who's requested that we start doing creativity labs there um, mm -hmm. They reached out to us to see if we couldn't supply a service to them. And it's blossomed into this. Once again, it's a relationship that went from, can you do a creativity lab to how about we throw you a party of 200 of your closest friends? <laughs> yeah. I was like, sure. So you've got, so these 200 people, I mean, the goal here is to, you're depositing in, you know, in their emotional bank. Yes. Um, and starting it, the yeah. relationship and they're going to come away from it thinking that's a great event. We weren't hassled for money. Right. And maybe start to simmer. How can we help? And then you're going to follow up right. down the road. And, and, I, and I'm and that and it's purely a thank you. I mean, mm. it's kind of what we we're talking about being real. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's allowing me to say thank you to all these people with a party mm -hmm. without asking them for money. But they all know in the back of their mind that I'm going to ask them for money eventually, probably. That's why they're there. But I'm mm -hmm. not, but it's, it's about building that relationship slowly. It's like one of the things I say about the unsteady hand is I, as we grow is I want to creep, not bound. And I kind of feel that way about asking for money. You know, I want mm -hmm. to creep into that relationship and then bound into the ask. Right. Yeah. I, I don't want to come up, say, invite somebody to a party and then say, hey, would you give me 20 bucks? That yeah. seems. That seems neat. It's tacky. It's, not, it's tacky. It's not what you do in real life. But what you can do is say, why don't you come to my party? I'm going to feed you. I'm going to give you a couple of drinks. Um, I'm going to give yeah. a couple of prizes. And then if you had a good time, next, let's sit down and week, have a tell me next, week, next week. How about 20 bucks? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? It's about developing yeah. relationships. I mean, it, I just think really, I hate to keep using the word relationships because I feel like it's getting redundant already. And it's only like half an hour in. But um, it really, to me, is all about relationships. But that's fundraising. And the more of these fundraising conferences you go to, you're going to see it's the word that gets thrown around all the time and has done for decades because yeah. that's, Cause that's what it is. Fundraising. Right. Works. I yeah. mean, what they, they say cliches are cliches for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Okay. Well, uh, if people want to know more about you um, yeah. and the Unsteady Hand, then where, where do we find you? Where do we follow you? Well, we are, we are, we, interesting enough, we're very um, across the internets. Um, and the reason mm. that's interesting is because our participants are not. Um, most of my cohorts and my participants are in their 70s, six, late 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're not really into the internet. But um, mm -hmm. we're on Twitter, kind of. I'm still figuring out Twitter. It confuses me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, Twitter confuses me, but I think it's important. Um, yeah. Facebook, we're at uh, the Unsteady Hand on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're on Instagram at the unsteady hand with uh, underscores between the names and, um, mm -hmm. and then Twitter we're at the unsteady hand. All one word. Yeah. Um, and you share, you share a lot of like visual stuff. You share some yeah, of the artwork. Yeah. So every, every piece that's produced is photographed and put on mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram. Nice. 75 to 80% of it's put on the website. Um, the reason that there's a difference is because it's a lot harder to get it uploaded on the website than it is Facebook and Instagram. It's just really easy to, to do it. And that way yeah. people can share with their families across the nation or their, the world for that matter. 
um, mm-hmm. um, their works that they've done without having to s- take pictures and send emails. It makes it really easy for them to share their experience with other people. I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. So that's really nice. um, most of my participants don't go to Facebook or Instagram, but their families mm-hmm. do. So it's not really for my participants that we do that. It's for my, their families to kind of engage in the process and kind of see yeah. what they're doing. So I don't know. It's cool. Do you put your art up there? Do you make? Do you make that? I art don't make art. It? I'm not an artist. I'm a facilitator. What? Yeah, I don't. So really what, make do, art. what do you do at these events? You just like schmooze around. I schmooze around. I facilitate. I um. So I grew up with a mother who has a master's in fine arts. Um. <laughs> so I grew up in the world of art. Um. Yeah. So I wouldn't qualify myself. Like I don't make art, but I would consider myself an artist or artsy. Yeah. Maybe I'm artsy. I'm not an artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I facilitate these labs, and then we also have artists come in and facilitate the labs who are true studio artists. Um, one of my goals is to pay them once I make enough money. I, I think mm-hmm. about art. I think it's. I think artists need to be valued. So I think mm-hmm. you know everybody's like, oh, well, artists can just come in and teach a lab. Well, sure, but I think that artist should make some money and get some mm-hmm. gas money for doing that, right? Yeah, and that's one of my. That's one of my motivations to raise more money, is so that I can share the wealth. Right. Yeah. Um, and involve everybody. Um, so yeah. being always needy. And I think lots of nonprofits have this idea that because they're a nonprofit, they don't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't, maybe that's true. Maybe I'm naive and green and maybe that is a fact, but to me, there's some value and you get back what you pay for in a lot of ways. And if you give an artist, I mean, it's hard to describe yeah. exactly what I'm trying to say. No, I know what you're saying, and I think, but actually, I think a lot of nonprofits would agree with you that they want to pay the fair, mm-hmm. the fair wage. Right. Um, that actually, the problem more so probably comes from the funders, right? That the people who are donating, and the the grant organizations and the individuals who donate think, well, why don't you just get it for free? You're a charity. I, right. I would rather my money go elsewhere. Right. Well, luckily, um. <laughs> Our funding streams are people with Parkinson's, the medical community, mm-hmm. kind of in general, the senior community, and the arts community. Those are kind of our three main funding streams. And most of those mm-hmm. people, especially the arts community, see the value in that. Um, the other thing I'll say about that, kind of that made me kind of sparked a thought, was when I tell people who are not in the nonprofit world that one of my fundraising goals is to make enough money to pay myself, they look at me like I'm crazy. Like, <laughs> well, you're going to get paid? Really? That's so yeah. wrong. And you talk yeah. to anybody in the fundraising world, I say one of my goals is to make enough money fundraising so that I can pay myself so I can do this full time. They're like, of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's, you know, that whole, like, what is money concept to different people um, <laughs> in and out of the fundraising and nonprofit world? Um, and so yeah. part of my job is to convince donors that artists are important and they deserve to be paid. And mm-hmm. that, um, sure, the imagination space will give me their facility for free. But I don't mind giving them five dollars a head to help mm-hmm. facilitate their mission, right? Paying it forward. Um, yeah. Old Davis Finney, I just offered to give him three percent of my profits. Or profits. See, yeah. I still think of it as a business in my head. Three percent of yeah, my yeah. fundraising, I offered to give to another nonprofit that I believe in. Um, and um, when I, it's kind of funny when I had a, I was a tile setter in Portland, Oregon for um, about ten years, and I started this thing where I gave five percent of my profits to Habitat for Humanity, which mm-hmm. I thought was really cool. I thought that was like really amazing and really proactive and paying it forward. And to a T, I can think of like one out of maybe a thousand customers who didn't say, well, why don't you just give me 5% off? And <laughs> and, I was like, and that's how people think, right? Yeah. And then my goal is to change that thinking that you got to pay it forward, Yeah, right? It's got to... It's not all about taking it in and getting. Yeah. You, if you don't give back, is that just what we were talking about before? It's that universe thing. It's yeah. it's what you put out there, you get back. And if you put, if all you do is take, and you don't give out, your nonprofit's gonna last a year, <laughs> yeah. or maybe not even that long. I don't yeah, know. So yeah. I think I think the financials are really tricky to talk to people about. But if yeah. you don't talk about them, it's not gonna happen. It's that, it goes yeah. back to the other thing we talked about, being real. And yeah, know? being open and honest, honest and yeah. transparent. I think transparency is a big thing with the in-city hand. Um, both, fi- I mean, I've all, I've, I'm so transparent. I like when to post our budget on Facebook so all my friends know, like all of our Facebook, because we have 400 Facebook friends on, for our on city hand. And I would yeah. love for them to see our budget. So they go, yeah. wow, you need that much money to do what you do? 
But then everybody's yeah. like, no, don't do that, don't do that. So I'm not doing that. But that's how transparent I want to be. It's but interesting. I'm not going to be that transparent because I've got to find a balance. <laughs> there's, there's an organization you should look at called uh, GiveWell, GiveWell.org, yeah. and they, they're ultimately transparent, and they publish like all their budgets mm -hmm. on their website, but they pu publish a recording of all their board meetings. So they record the audio of the board mm. meetings and put them mm -hmm. on the website for anyone to listen to. Every time the organization makes a mistake, like if they do like, you know, if there's an incident, HR incident, or if there's a problem mm -hmm. in the office or they lose a file, right. they type it up and put it on the website. And, and they're like, mm. here's the mistakes we made in July. Oh, interesting. It's, I could do that because I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> my, my You're going to need mistake, a bigger website. My first mistake, I had... Um, my, I spent like hours and hours and hours making my first brochure, my little trifold brochure, yeah. and it's color glossy, beautiful things. And I had, I made two mistakes. I had three hundred printed, which was way too many in retrospect. You don't need three hundred at a time; you need like fifty at a time. <laughs> well, for me and my size organization, and I had a typo in it, <laughs> so I had to throw them all away because I was just one word, but I wasn't yeah. going to use it brochure with the typo in it so i had to nah. throw them all away and reorder 300 more brochures <laughs> and wasted you know, that's when i had about 170 dollars in the bank and i spent pretty <laughs> much all of it on brochures um yeah and so that yeah that's funny anyway that's a lesson for you. That's i make a lot lesson. of mistakes <laughs> all right well listen will you come back um in like six months or a year and let us know how you're getting on give Let's us an update six months. This is fun. Yeah, that'd be good, uh, and that that way you have the pressure of having to report back to all the podcast listeners oh. um, and tell us how how you've leapt and bounded. So, into how much future. pressure? Like, how many podcast listeners are we talking about? Like, what, how much uh, pressure? Is none. This? Oh, none. none oh, okay, that's yeah, not it's much just pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm very stern. I'm okay, very stern. Uh, you're all right. All right. Okay. Well, listen. Thanks a million, Mo. Thanks for coming on, and thanks for being so open and honest. And um, it's a great project. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, you know what we forgot? What? Real quick. www.theunsteadyhand.org. Yeah. We forgot that. that we didn't talk that's about where that. We, was, where we that's where you go your, to find the big picture. That's what, where all your mistakes are listed. That's where my mistakes hand. will be listed. I, I might do that. I kind of like – that would be a way for me to be transparent without giving everybody the, my budget. It's pretty good. Well, I mean, it's kind of. I'd love to see that as a Facebook post. Hey guys, this is my. Uh, this is the flyer that I did three hundred with a typo. I had to bin it. You know, mm -hmm. laughing, laughing at yourself, self-deprecation. I bet. Well, I bet I, if you did that, someone would come in and offer to pay for the next three hundred. I bet you're right, and I actually, um, I did just acknowledge you just got two emails from me, one of which I invited. Yep. My whole ninety people on my mailing list, which is not a lot, I invited ninety people to a party, and I didn't put the date on it. Yeah. So I had yeah. to send a second email saying I'm an idiot. Um, here's the second email. <laughs> and I, meant, I meant I meant to say that to you. Look at your open rates because the the emails that get the highest open rates are the ones where like, oops, we made a mistake, or oh, right. sorry, we messed up, or yeah. people open them because we're dying to see what the mistake right. was. Right. And people actually responded to the second email saying, mm -hmm. "Wow, that was funny. You're you're I like the way you own that." rather than yeah. not and so i got a lot of, i actually got emails for the first time of all the emails i've ever sent i've got more yeah. emails responding to the mistake i made than yeah. all the good news i've trying to share people love <laughs> mistakes which is good yeah. news for me and you. yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> funny all right i'm gonna leave you to it so okay. um let's sign off say goodbye and uh the unsteady hand .org. thank That's you, where we find you thanks so much mo mm, take bye -bye. it easy Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and head over to changefundraising.com to learn more or get in touch with Simon. Or don't. Whatever. You're big enough to make your own decisions. Hello, this is Morgan Freeman. For discounts on Simon's best-selling online fundraising courses, go to www dot change fundraising dot com forward slash training and use coupon code podcast complete them in your own time wherever you want get busy living or get busy buying